think we are live. We are rolling. <clears throat> Everyone, I apologize for the hour pushback tonight. Uh, just right out of the gate, I wanted to say sorry for the hour pushback. Um, had a little bit of something I had to take care of for work. And so it just had to be done. But again, as we mentioned on the community page on the YouTube channel, if you guys prefer us airing at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, please let me know. Um, it, was kind of, it was kind of split in our responses. But if you guys prefer us doing it now rather than an hour earlier, let me know. I can, it, it actually works better for my schedule um, to be doing it right now. So if we want to keep the Sunday sessions going and you guys prefer eight o'clock Eastern standard time, go ahead and let me know. We are, I'm also probably going to have our guys put up a, put up a poll and see if seven o'clock or eight o'clock is preferred. Uh, that way we can have more people here and have a better discussion and it'll just run a little smoother. So anyhow, um, Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. We hope you're having a good weekend. For everyone in the Gulf, we, uh, boy, my heart goes out to you. You guys have had three, three big, big storms in one year, and it's all hit in the same area. So, again, hopefully, if you are tuning in or if you're from that area and you're watching this later, my heart goes out to you. I hope you're safe. I hope you and your family are well. I hope damage wasn't too bad and that we can uh, see you back on the water really soon. So again, guys, uh, take care, be safe, and uh, we want the best for you. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about upcoming videos here on the channel. And I feel like I'm leaning in on the camera. Sorry. Um, upcoming videos here on the YouTube channel. And then we'll get into tonight's topic. Um, first and foremost, we are at, uh, well, last week we had our uh, review of the Stage 1 kit on the uh, K1, uh, K-Speed Ultra 350, wow, I'm a space kid. The Ultra 310R equipped with the Stage 1 kit from K-Speed. Um, that was a really, that's a really wild machine. I did not get to ride it personally. I didn't get to go down to Australia. Um, I've actually been talking with Kawasaki about maybe getting my hands on a 310 because that kit works for all 310s, whether it's an LX or an R or an X or an S, XSE. Um, so if I can get my hands on a 310 for, for this next year, um, the the kind of the project I want to do is I want to see if the guys at K-Speed will ship up an ECU and the pump wedge kit and the intake grate. And I'm going to do, uh, I, I'm actually buying um, an accelerometer and we're going to be doing acceleration testing with every step of that kit uh, just to show acceleration numbers for the Ultra. And those are just numbers that don't exist. They're just a lot of guys don't take them. Kawasaki doesn't register them. And they definitely don't. I mean, they might on like a radar gun. Um, but they definitely don't advertise those numbers. So I wanted to get a base on an Ultra. And then I wanted to incrementally start modifying it with the Stage 1 kit. And with that, we're able to document, listen, we went from 68 and a half miles an hour to 77 miles an hour, all with three parts. You can do it too. And that's going to be the really exciting thing. Um, so that video, uh, the video on the stage one kit that came out last week. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. Uh, I were hoping for the 28th. I'm looking at my calendar here on the wall. Um, on the 28th, we're hoping to have, the VX uh, VX Limited HO, uh, 2021 VX Limited HO review. And that's going to be uh, the penultimate of our 2021 Yamaha reviews for the year. Um, 
we're not going to be able to go out and test ride anything from Yamaha uh, for a few more months. And, uh-oh. Okay, sorry. Wow, the screen just totally tapped out on me. That was really weird. Okay. <laughs> I thought I lost everyone. Um, okay, so... We're gonna have that. Uh, we're gonna have that FF or the VX cruise or VX Limited. I keep saying cruiser, VX Limited HO review up on the twenty eighth. Shortly after that, we still have two. Believe it or not, we still have two two thousand twenty reviews to do. We have a really neat. Um, we have a really neat short, and that might take place probably in December. Uh, some some tech tips when it comes to restoring plastics, because black plastic fades really bad, especially on the sea news. And so we did a tech article on how to, how to restore those. So that content's coming out. I still have the article on me doing uh, kind of a record run, at least for me, of 443 miles. Actually, it ended up being triple fours. It was 444. Um, but doing over 440 miles in one day on the Kawasaki STX. And um, that is going to be coming out next month. So we have quite a bit. I was actually going to put up a schedule of upcoming videos on the YouTube channel just because a lot of people are anticipating what we got coming up and then what, um, what stuff we're planning for early next year. So we definitely, and we don't take a break during the winter. We don't winterize. So <laughs> um, we are going to be pumping out content, content nonstop. I mean, absolutely nonstop. Okay, so let's get into um, 2022. Because we know what the 2021 stuff looks like. Um, now, this is way putting the cart before the horse. And a lot of people are asking for like inside info on what's coming out and what this is going to be more or less is going to be under, quite frankly, this is meant to be more educational. It's not to be more, it, this is less about teasing and more about educating you so you understand how the OEs work. Okay. Nine times out of 10, you follow the money, follow the money. See where the manufacturer puts their money. Okay? That's rule number one. Rule number two, look for patents. Pay attention to the patent board. Okay? For example, there's a million people who go on Facebook and go on forums who've got their head so far up their rear that their shoulders touch their butt. And they out, go out there and they say, there's a, there's a two liter four cylinder Rotax, or there is a 2.2 liter Yamaha coming out, or there is Nano Excel three coming out, or Yamaha is going to go all turbos next year. All right. And it just, it just keeps going. And the irony of it is that no one's bothering to look anywhere else outside of the watercraft division. And here's a hint, guys. Sea-Doo, Yamaha, Cowie. Don't do much if it doesn't apply to their other vehicles. All right? Look at the Link system on Sea-Doo. Link system was on all the Can-Ams. All right? It's on all the quads. It's on the ski doos It's on the side-by-sides. You look at the intelligent control systems. Same story. All there. You look at the dash cluster. For goodness sakes, in 2018, everyone was making fun of the dash clusters because they had turn signals and ABS brake lights on watercraft. They literally took that, da that dash cluster and yanked it off of the spiders and shoved it on the watercraft. So again, look at the siblings. Um, I, I erroneously, well, I was right, but I got slapped on the wrist for it, was I did an article a while ago where um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a, I don't know about any sort of warranty um, for 2021 for your for CDU. 
You're going to have to talk to the dealership about that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, there's other dealers who will cut you. Um, I know Cycle Springs, they have lifetime engine warranty or powertrain warranty if you buy it through Cycle Springs. Um, and that's that's a hell of a deal. Uh, so if you guys are in the if, – if you guys – I'll tell you what, travel. I would almost – if I was in Georgia or Alabama, I'd drive down to Cycle Springs just to get that warranty deal. That's killer. That's a killer deal. Anyway, um, but uh, – Honestly, if you really want to pay attention, if you really want to know where any of the manufacturers are going, pay attention to their to their bigger money makers. Okay. For example, this is an old joke. Is if you want to know next year's colors for Sea Doo, look at Ski Doo. All right. Look at the new Ski Doos. They're yellow, they're millennium yellow, and then they're purple and that neon yellow, which are all the RXPX colors. Okay, they're all there. It's because they buy they buy the plastic colored beads from which they melt and mold into be, all the fairings and plastics. They buy it in bulk. All right, it saves them money. So just again, pay attention to the other stuff. All right, people who grew up in a big family you know, and being the younger kid, you know the hand me downs like you're going to get your big brother's jacket or your big brother's shoes or whatever. It's a little bit of that. It's not. Always that way, because there are some things that come out first on watercraft that later make their way into the other manufacturers, but or I mean into the other into the other branches, excuse me. But the big thing is to pay attention where the money is. Pay attention to the money. It's all about the money. Okay, so let's start from the top down. 2022 Kawasaki. Chances are we are going to, it'll probably be the first, it, it, very likely to see the first variations of colors for the ST3, or S, ST3, STXs, all right? Because we know that for 2000, for, for 2000 and 2021, they kept all the colors the same. So um, it's very likely we're going to see uh, some variation of colors for, um, for 2022. And that's just because they're putting a lot of effort and there's a lot of appeal in the new recreation segment for Kawasaki. So they're going to change it up a little bit. Will we see color? Or, I mean, will we see color changes in the Ultras? Most likely. Um, the R, uh, the 310R is going to remain in, in neon green, Cowie green, because I've never seen the R in any other color. Um, and it is very likely that the LX is also going to remain in that metallic green, just because Cowie hasn't changed that either. Um, what you will see are, are ch uh, color changes for the Ultra LX, which is naturally aspirated, the 310X, and then the and then the US only 310X SE, the special edition. Um, interestingly enough, because it is, so, I mean, that is actually more of a number filler, the SE, and it just fills a little segment. And the only difference is that it's a it's a different color, and it has. Um, a nicer seat, all right? And it's an in-between of the LX seat and the R seat. So it's just, a, it's just a segment filler between the X, 310X, and 310LX. So that's really it. Guys in Australia, New Zealand, Europe, they're not getting the, the 310SE, unfortunately. And why I say unfortunately is because the SE has been the recipient of my opinion, the best colors in the last six, seven years. Um, they had a beautiful, beautiful metallic burnt orange. Um, then they've gone to more of like a, what I would call a hugger orange, like a Chevrolet, you know, 1969 Z, you know, Z28, you know, hugger orange with white stripes, white, white hounds tooth interior. Um, that was a really neat, solid orange. That was a cool color. Um, this year it's more of a, uh, more of a red, uh, but it is orangey. It has like a, it's almost like a, like a 
tangerine. Um, but the SE has had the best, the best colors across the board for me. Unfortunately, I'm very, I'm very confident we're not going to see a break in 2022. Uh, the break might happen in 23 if the market continues as it is going currently. And the only way for the market to continue climbing the way it is, um, according to some of the best dealers I've talked to, is depending on how the U.S. election goes in 2000 for 2020. I, I'm, I'm totally brain fogging right now. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, anyhow, that is going to be the, the big deciding factor is the trajectory of watercraft sales in about 24 days. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, all right, so let's talk about Yamaha. Yamaha, um, Yamaha right now is is got a lot of momentum. And they have so much momentum that they're not really motivated in any new vehicles. So I really don't see any new vehicles coming out. Um, but I did mention previously that the sound system, uh, the sound system that you're seeing, you know, the integrated factory sound system that is in the new VXs. If you like that, pay attention to the FXs because it's very likely. Um, it's very li well. I say very likely because I don't want to say certainly. Um, number two is. This one's a little bit on the fence. I'm not quite, I'm not entirely sure. But Yamaha is very happy with the non-touchscreen all digital dash on the new VXs and GPs. And they're very happy with it because it's less things to go wrong. It's it's it doesn't it doesn't distract the rider like a touchscreen does. You know, putting your hand up and farting around with the, the screen does distract the rider. And the new system, putting the control pad directly on the right-hand side underneath the throttle, um, is a little less distracting. And they, they've had some really good results with that. Uh, they toyed, they, they, they kind of teased me and asked, like, hey, would you... Would you be interested in, in this setup being on the FX? And I'm like, well, you don't ask me that question unless you're already planning on doing it. And, uh, and, and both Jerry and I were like, no, no, we really think it's responsive and we really like it. And, you know, if you're wearing gloves, it's really hard to get the touchscreen to work. Um, a lot of people do wear gloves. So the touchscreen has had some issues. Um, and so... It's a pos I don't think it'll be next year, but I do think that the um, uh, it might be 23. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, do you think the VX sound is better than the current F FX when an underseat subwoofer is added? You know, that's a good question. Um, the the underseat sub okay, well, okay. L Matt, Matthew, okay, there you have a couple. There's a couple things here. All right, the current FX has two options when it comes to sound systems. It has the Echo X gear, which drop into the cup holders, and then there is a subwoofer that slides. It's a waterproof Bluetooth subwoofer that slides into the wet storage on the very back of the transom, you know, on the very back of the, the swim step, okay? That is the whole kit and caboodle Echo X gear Bluetooth system. Now there is a JL audio system and the JL audio system with its subwoofer is installed not from the factory. The JL audio system is installed at your dealership and they literally have to take the entire top deck off of your ski and have to replace it with an all new, there's a sub deck in there. All right. It's the inner structure of your deck and that deck with that subwoofer, the subwoofer is monstrous. It's huge. It's like what you put in the back of your Trans Am in the 80s. It's huge. All right. 
Um, that thing eats up that glove box. The glove box becomes just a little tray. It sucks. I mean, I, it takes the fun out of the FX because I really like the, the glove box on the FX. And But that subwoofer with the JL audio system will melt your effing face. Um, it will melt your face. I mean, it's it's stupid. Uh, the JL system is stupid. It re- I think it requires a secondary battery, um, and it has its own wiring harness too. With a uh, there's a there's a uh, the relay harness goes on the goes on the bulkhead that that separates um, the engine compartment from the the little drop in tub where the exhaust is. You know, and that's where the ECU is mounted. Um, it's it's very intricate. The JLs and, and that's why you're paying like twenty. Is it like twenty two hundred dollars? Is that what it is? Um, the JL system will melt your face. I mean, it's just it's bitching, but it eats up your glove box. It adds a bunch of weight. It's a mon- It drains your battery. Um, it's just a, it's just a monster. But if you have to have the loudest sound system on a bitchin FX, dude, go with the JL. Um, kind of talks cheaper standard system. Okay. So that is going to be the Echo X gear. And the Echo X gear is the Bluetooth one. You can literally, you pop off, you can throw it in the water, they float. Um, and then there is a little subwoofer. It's about that size, about that big. And uh, about, I think it's like 10, I think it's square. I think it's like 10 and a half or 11 by 11. Um, but it slides right in the wet storage. It's padded, so it's not going to rattle around and shake. Um, they did a really nice job with it. It's, I mean, it's a really neat little job they did, and it's all through the accessory catalog. So um, if sound system is your thing and you're a Yamaha guy, you can do the little Echo X Gear cubes, which honestly are ideal for the EXs. Those little guys are great for the EXs because the EX only goes 45, and that's as pretty much as loud as, I mean, no one wants to go 45, 50 on an EX. You're just getting your teeth rattled out. And so 40 miles an hour with those little, those little tweeters, they work great. They work great. The new VX systems are very, very comparable to the BRP sound system. Like identical. Um, if you're, are you on a GP going, you know, super damn fast? You're not going to hear it. You're just not. Over 60 miles an hour, you're not hearing a damn thing. Um, but that's almost the same way with the jet sounds on the Cowie. CD is a little better. Um, I could hear on my RXTX going 75, I could barely hear. 65, I could hear. So take that for what it's worth. Um, mechanical changes for 2023 or 2022, none. Uh, I don't see any mechanical changes. Uh, Jimmy, no changes to Nano Excel to paint finish. You know what's interesting? They're they're already working on it. Guys, I got to get a drink. I'm trying out. Sorry, it's rude. Uh, At least I'm not eating a pizza in front of you. All right. So they're already very, very aware of the delaminating issue. Okay. And that just comes down. it, 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 It doesn't require anything mechanical. All right. It doesn't require the, uh, it doesn't require anything mechanically to be done, meaning physically to be done to the hull material or the hull itself. Hull prep is still good. The bonding surface is still good. As someone who has painted cars and painted fiberglass and painted skis before, um, the the adhesion surface is good. What their issue is is. The hull is going to flex. It's going to flex. It's going to give because of, because of the material it works. Um, but what they all they have to do, and what Watkins was saying in regards to it, was they're they're working with um, uh, ad, how do I say this with um, adhesion modifiers for the base coat. So what? how many of you guys have ever painted an engine block? I don't know. But 
I, I, I build the occasional motor. I try to build a motor a year at least. And um, that, that's for my car magazine. And so when it comes to painting an engine block, if that surface has any oil on it, or if that surface has any sort of contaminants on it, your engine paint is going to just peel right off. And the problem with that is, okay, now you're, you've painted your engine and now it's just flaking apart. It, it, you know, there's, there's no bonding, you know, there's no bond. And so you really have to prep the surface. Well, when it comes to personal watercraft or fiberglass for that matter, or any of these surfaces that are painted using an automotive grade paint, they need to have a, a really good adhesion promoter primarily in the base coat, primarily in either the buildup primer or as a flashing adhesion promoter, which is basically like another coat or in the paint itself. And they're cur currently working on the, on tweaking the chemistry of their paint. And that's what they're working on right now. So I foresee this going away the same way the timing chain issue went away. Um, it's just that they, they're working on a better chemical compound. So that's, that's my answer. It's, it's a long answer, but um, that's the best answer I can give you. So uh, yeah, they don't have to, they don't have to mess the hull. The hull's fine. Um, do they crack hulls? Do they break them? Well, yeah, you put Chris, you put Chris McCluggage out in Daytona beach and he, and he's got a ski that goes 82 miles an hour and he's out there completely, he won't let go of the throttle until they pry his hand off of there with a crowbar. They're going to break a hull, okay? But you, you and me, we're not going to crack hulls unless we run into something like an idiot. So that's a different story. Now, is there a Nano XL3? I asked. They said no. Um, they're, very, they're very happy with the process, and they're very happy with the materials they are looking into improving it. Could there be a Nano XL3? Sure, why not? Okay. But right now, from what I've been told, there is none. And it, that's, that's another unobtainium, unobtainium, you know, Facebook forum lore thing. So just let that one go. Um, last thing for this. Oh, I got a good one, guys. This one sucks. Uh, this one sucks personally, like I, I'm bummed about it. Um, and I know there's a lot of guys who are really bummed about it too. The ones I talked to, um, especially because I was told differently about a year ago, year and a half ago. And that is that there is no plans for a wave blaster. Um, the idea would be to take the super jet, slap a seat on it. Not even a seat, it's a bench, it's a banana seat off a of Schwinn. Um, remember banana seats on Schwinn's? I'm, again, showing my age. But uh, the idea was to have a little one-seater for wave jumping. And, I mean, I asked about it, a bunch of other guys have asked about it. Watkins really likes the idea. Apparently, Japan doesn't like the idea. And making the super jet happen was enough of a challenge apparently. Um, okay, sorry, that felt, that seemed really weird. Okay. Sorry. Um, but yeah, making the super jet was kind of already pulling teeth. They wanted it, but Watkins wasn't going to half ass it. So unfortunately there just isn't any plans for a super, or I mean for a wave blaster. That, oh, dude, I'd, I'd want a Wave Blaster tomorrow. Because that's why the EXR is one of my favorites. I mean, honestly, one of my favorites. Anyone who's like, oh, yeah, Kevin's a shill for Cali or CD or whatever. Uh, mind you, I'm wearing a Yamaha shirt. But uh, I will tell you, that I'm like, if I, if I was a single guy, I would have bought an EXR already. Um, yeah, I, I love, I, I love the EXR. And I was crying for a for a blaster I'm like, dude bring them i i actually thought they should have named the exr the wave blaster i joked about it Watkins said it was actually they actually had stickers all printed out or designed at least they had them all designed up 
And then they said, well, crap, if we're going to do, if we're going to do this, it kind of takes any opportunity we have of a future wave blaster off the table. So they chose not to use the wave blaster name. And that was told to me with a wink and a smile. And I was like, oh, okay. So that leads one to presume that the idea of a future wave blaster is out there. Well, it was confirmed that in their five-year prospectus, there was no wave blaster. They, they, they not only are they not working on one currently, there isn't plans for one in the next five years or plans for designing one in the next five years. And as we've talked about before, all these guys are minimum four to five years out. So, um, sorry to be the bearer of bad news. No way blaster. All right. Um, just curious, is the market for wave runners strong in Japan like it is in the USA and other countries? Um, first, the U.S. is the number one market in the U. The U.S. is the number one market in the world, and inside of the U.S., the number one market inside of the U.S. is Florida. Um, my understanding is that California fell back to like fourth or fifth place. Um, but yeah, Florida, Texas is number two. I want to say something like, I think Arizona is third. Guy, I saw it where it was like, like Lake of the Ozarks was fourth. Um, I might be wrong. I, I, I want to look that up. And if you guys have those numbers, I'd be interested. But it goes U.S., Canada, Australia, um, Japan, UK, Brazil's weird. Brazil shows up in the top five every now and again, but it all depends. Believe it or not, it all depends on the money. Um, the, I, I don't know what they, I don't know what the currency in, in Brazil is. Um, but the currency fluctuates real bad in Brazil. But when the when the economy's banging in Brazil, they're all buying jet skis and butt implants. I presume, because all you see on Instagram are Brazilian girls with big butts. <laughs> Sorry, it's a joke. Um, anyway, but yeah, that's um, that's kind of the breakdown from what I from what I last saw. And I think I I want to say Japan was like third or fourth in the world. Um, crap. I don't know for certain. I hate saying stuff that I don't know for like for absolute cement fact. So take that with a grain of salt. I apologize. Okay. So um, Yamaha speakers on the FX. No wave blaster. Okay. I think that's it. All right. So let's like I see you. All right. Um, the big news for Cedu. Now uh, check this out. So. 2018, we got the ST3 platform. Uh, 2020, we got the all new GTI and GTR lineup. I mean, these are I mean these are segments, big chunk segments. All right. So 2018 was our full size big daddy three seaters. 2020 was our three seaters mid range GTI lineup, which is our number one selling lineup. All right, 2021, we get the new uh, RXPX, all right? Well, what's 2022? Yeah, 21 RXPX, 22. What's going on with 22, all right? Well, the most interesting thing to me is, again, follow the money. What is out there? What did, what did Yamaha, or wow, what did CDU just pump a bunch of money into? All right. And what did they just reveal that everyone's super excited about? All right. The, obviously, the RXPX. The big changes, the big three changes are the Big Daddy screen on the GTX Limited, the um, IDF, which is the mechanical reverse. All right, those two. And then number three, 
um, screen, IDF, crap, I just blanked on one. I totally blanked on it. Because sound systems are all the big things with sound systems. They have all that. Wow, I totally blanked. Uh, does anyone know another dealer that offers a lifetime engine warranty other than Cycle Springs? That is a good question. I do not know. I do not know any other dealer that has that level of service. Um, that's a good question. ST3R. No, they're not changing the hull at all. They won't touch that hull. They're going to leave it alone. Um, well, let's just count on the first two big things. All right. The screen. Yeah, the shark deal. That's the T3 hull. Um, T3 hull is a slightly modified T3. And uh, they're not going to put that hull underneath anything else. So unless, unless for fun they throw out a 230, you know, an RXP, or not an X, but an RXP 230 or a GTR X 230, maybe. Um, but I haven't heard anything about that. Stop asking about the Spark Polytech 2.0. Stop. Stop. No. No. I'll tell you why. Because they don't need to. They don't need to. <laughs> I know. I'm teasing you, Mark. I'm giving you a hard time. Uh, <laughs> passenger eject button. The passenger eject button is if you don't latch the back seat down well enough and you just hit a good bump, you'll launch the whole back seat. I'm teasing. Um... But the big thing is, is obviously the screen. Are the screens going to show up on the other machines? Possibly. Very likely. Um, it might be an option. Don't know. Uh, IDF might be, show, might be available on other watercraft. And as, maybe as a checkbox, uh, we'll, see, you know, we'll see how it does this year. That's the big thing is, all right, let's see, you know, let's see who kills. <laughs> let's see how quickly people can kill their IDF out there. Um, but if they do well, we know that it works on a 300. We know that it works on a 230. We know that it works on a 170. So that's, hey, if it works, it works. It, it can hold up to the 300. It's okay because they're not getting the full RPMs out of the 300. It's on a limited RPM scale. So again, it's not being wrung out at, you know, 8,000 RPM. Um, next generation carbon seal. Next generation carbon seal. Okay. Um, We've talked about this like ad nauseum and ideally they should just get rid of the carbon seal. I think everyone agrees. The only people who disagree with the carbon seal um, are CDU. And it's because they own the patent and they've got millions of dollars tied up in the patent. And then they've got millions of dollars tied up in trying to fix the formula and trying to fix you know, and, and, and trying to make sure that it's not prematurely wearing, that there's no flex in it. Um, that That's just the problem, all right? Uh, so they've dumped so much money into it that it's one of these things that's like, we can't quit now. Look at all the money we've got into it. And it's like, yeah, but it's a problem. So what does Yamaha have instead of a carbon seal? It's got a bearing. It's a closed bearing. Same thing with Cowie. It's just a, just a mid-shaft bearing. I'm getting another drink. Um, it's lemonade. Sorry. All right. They've already changed the formula, and they've already changed the supplier. They're hoping that 2021 will be a good year for the carbon seal, and they won't have that. They won't have very many failures. And if it does well and the failure count goes down, then that new setup is going to change. It's going to, they're hopefully going to retroactively make those kits. Um, why do you say sorry so much? Sorry, Adrian. Jeez. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's, I think it's rude to be drinking in front of you, know, drinking and eating in front of people. Um, it's me being polite. I apologize. If I was a New Yorker, I'd just tell you to F yourself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Actually, I know New Yorkers are like, no, nah, Kevin's right. Um, but, uh, yeah, that is, that's kind of the issue. Um, imagine what, uh, see, here's the funny thing about it, 
is I had a conversation with a buddy of mine and he was like, can you imagine what the sales for CD would be if, if they just said, here's a kit to completely remove your carbon seal and put a mid shaft bearing in it, like a Cowie or a Yamaha. People would go bananas. It would go bananas. Um, I say sorry all the time because I'm Canadian. Kevin, are you sure you're not Canadian? My grandfather was Canadian because my great grandfather coming from Ireland pulled into Boston and they said, no, thanks. We're all full of Irish. And so he went up to Nova Scotia and made his way over to, to Ontario, Canada. And that's where my grandfather was born. And then he came down to the U S during the war and he worked for McDonnell Douglas painting uh, P 38 airplanes. So a little bit of Kevin history. Um, anyhow, so, which I love the story of showing up at Boston and Boston saying, no, thanks. We got enough Irish. We're good. You know, I'm like, don't tell me. I don't know about racism. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Um, so anyway, oh, that's what I forgot. I need to look at my notes more often. The c thing. Here's the last thing about c -Doo. The spark is seven years old in 2022. Seven years is often the cycle, well, eight years, um, is often the point where Sea-Doo makes changes to a watercraft. Eight years. Mm, I should say eight years. So seven years might be the last. Now I'm going to tell you this. For the last three years, I've been waiting for a Spark X. I know the Spark, I've seen the logo. Um, the Spark X exists. Now, the Spark X in its nascent form, and the first time I heard about it, it was just a reflashed 110 horsepower Spark. That's it. Head trim control wasn't as crazy as a Trix, because the Trix has the you know the extended, you know, the extended range. Um, so you can do a wheelie. Woo! Um, but my um, my introduction to the Spark X was 110 horsepower reflashed. Um, Ace, you know, 900 Ace. And it was just, it was just a rowdy little rompity romp, little two seater. It had some cool color, you know, cool color combinations and decals on it. It said Spark X. I was like, dude, make this. And instead, they came out with the tricks. And I honest, now mind you, I have, when, when at the press, if anyone from CDU ends up watching this, they're going to laugh because they'll remember this, was at the press intro. For the tricks, I had the flu, and I was miserable. And I literally went from riding the Spark tricks for my first time, just came off. The guy's like, what'd you think? I'm like, I can't talk right now. Walked up the beach to a planter at the hotel and barfed into the planter. So, <laughs> real classy. But I was, I was sick as a dog. I was a mess. And... Uh, so the Spark X is a really, it's a neat, or Spark X, the Trix is a neat ski. So, and they sell, they sell more Trix than any, than any other Spark. So that's why they ended up making a three-seater Trix, which I thought was hilarious. And, and the Trix has prevailed this long. Um, it's just super popular. Uh, but the reality is that most, more people would rather have a Spark X. Put some sponsons on it. Or some racy handlebars or something. Give me some cool aggressive colors and give me an extra, you know, 20 horse. Boom. Done. Make the Spark X. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Two years ago, what did Ski Doo do with the 900 Ace? Anyone? Class? Anyone? They put a turbo on it. Thing makes like a like 138 horse or it dynoed it like a, a 140 horse. It's ape. It's an absolute ape. The, the ski doo dudes, those guys, those cats are hardcore. For my Canadian friends, you guys are crazy. Going through trees at 90 miles an hour with a turbocharged ski. Oh my gosh. Dude. <laughs> Dude. That's insanity. That's insanity. And what's crazy about that is I already saw. Um, I already saw some dudes prototyping, putting the Ski-Doo turbo setup 
and a spark. And apparently it fits. Like you have to move the water box like a couple inches. So you need an extended coupler or a shorter water box with a longer coupler. I, I don't I, I don't know what it was, but the actual plumbing for the turbo setup, an air box has to be different. But the mechanical hard parts all fit in a spark. I'm like, oh my gosh, that would be that would be bats. That would be crazy. And I remember, I remember, I think I sent it. I, I, I texted the picture to Jared Gaddis, and he's like, "What the hell is this?" I go, "This guy just put a turbo spark, a, a, a skidoo motor, which is a spark motor." In a spark, in a two-seater spark. And he goes, oh, that's cool. I go, dude, everything fits. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. That's what I'm talking about. So that's, I mean, that's literally handing a kid a loaded gun. You're like, here you go, Johnny. <laughs> Have fun. Don't shoot your foot off. I mean, that's that, that'd that be crazy. That'd be, you're right, 60 mile an hour, a 60 mile an hour spark. Exactly. Exactly, 100%. So is that going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. In eight years, that's when they hit the, the, that's when they hit the reset button and they redesign it. Um, will we see a, re, a resized Spark or a redesigned Spark in 23? I don't know. Um, well, no, 22 is because 2014 was the first year of the Spark. And it's every eight years. So, yeah, it would be 22. So, 22 is eight years. Holy cow. Okay. So, 2022 is eight years of the Spark. I don't know if we're going to see a new Spark or not. I, ha I haven't heard anything. But it would be interesting. It would be interesting. Um, okay. So, let's go back to what are the big things that that cdu has got in their arsenal. The screen, the IDF, and then... Um, the sound systems. The sound systems now are on the GTI. They're on the RXPX. They're on the RXTX. They're on all the full-size three-seaters. So what does the future hold? And this is where we get into, like, you know, future project this stuff. Okay. And I'm only going to spend about 20 minutes on this because most people are going to tune out. All right. What's the big demand? A lot of people want watercraft that are Cadillacs, that are fully loaded. And, um, thank you for your Bono glasses. Mark, I remember giving out those stupid things. You use them? You like them? <laughs> cool, if you do, uh, awesome. Um, consumers want something a little more cush, a little more feature-friendly. Uh, to the point that even the guys at Yamaha are like, oh, I hate that we have to put this crap on a GP. But guys want a sound system on a GP. And guys want cruise control on a GP. And guys are going to want tilt steering on a GP. And they're going to want heated seats and drink, foot well drains. Uh, the heated seats haven't happened yet, but, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so they're looking at the feature list. And they're like, okay, okay, all right. You know, this has got to be here. This has got the big digital dash, you know, you know, dashboards, the digital screens. So you're seeing a lot of demand for these high-end features. And because these are now becoming standardized, the cost has to come from somewhere. And that means everything's going up. Everything's going up. Um, Yamaha only went up at like 200 bucks. I think Cowie went up $100. Sea-Doo went up for many watercraft, like eight or $900, okay? Is that because of demand? Possibly. Is that because there's so many new features? More likely. Um, that unfortunately means that if you want something stripped down and bare bones, it's getting tougher and tougher to find that, especially when it comes to a muscle craft, like a GP or an RXPX. An RXPX, in its, in its bare form, one C standard lock steering still pretty expensive you know i mean it's like 1800 dollars more expensive 
than a base GP. And that's without the purple, because the purple's more expensive. It's another 300 bucks. So, yeah, it's that money's got to come from somewhere. And it's unfortunate because it's like you have this large majority of people over here who are like, I want every bell and whistle. I want a sound system. I want headlights. I want a horn. I want blah, 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 blah. And then there's guys over here who are like, dude, I just want a go trigger. And, you know, unfortunately, we're just seeing... <laughs> we're seeing that divergent path. So, unfortunately, that crowd's going to win over this little crowd. You see what I'm saying? So, what would you buy if you wanted to race next season? What am I racing, John? I mean, like, am I racing offshore? Am I racing close course? Am I racing skis? Am I racing sit-downs? Um, am I drag racing? Am I... Tell me what I'm racing, because it matters. Um, I'll wait for your answer. Um, so future watercraft, so I'm five years down the road, they're going to all have really nice da digital dash screens. They're all going to communicate with your phone. All right. You're going to see people saying, well, I want my sound system to talk to my phone or I, or I want my I want to operate my sound system through my through my dashboard via my phone. So all the music on my phone, I want to control through my dash, and my dash communicates to my sound system. That's the next step. All three manufacturers have talked about that. Um, that's the big thing, is the dash screen. Yeah, <laughs> Apple PMC iPlay. <laughs> yeah. Except for you're going to have a new iOS update, and it's going to take you 45 minutes to download before you can even go out and ride. Um, then, yeah, Mark, good point. You're exactly right. Other people want a GPS inside of their dash. Okay, offshore GP stand-up drag build. You, you can't do all of them. So, um, yeah, if I was doing close course... Close course GP, offshore, um, not offshore endurance, but like offshore Aqua X, FX. Offshore endurance, Cowie. Stand up, Super Jet. Yeah, okay. Drag build, dude, GP. GP just went 137 miles an hour. <laughs> Forget it, GP. Um, uh, better yet, go through the list of different racing. I literally just did, like, four seconds ago. Um, rewind the clock. Watch again. So, five years down the line, you're going to see sound systems communicating with your phone through the dashboard. Very likely to start seeing GPS also through the dashboard. Um, that's the big ticket. Next, and this is a tough one, is if the IDF is as, is as successful as I as I hope it to be, as I pretty much expect it to be, I see the IDF transforming into high and low gear with a reverse transmission. I talked about it before. And I'll beat on it again. I really do see... Um, are you trying to give me a 2021 GTX Limited 300 with a ski pilot? No. You can get one if you want. Cool, go for it. I wouldn't race it at all. Is that, no, that's a different guy. Oliver, okay. Oliver is, not, is a different guy. Okay, sorry. Um, anyways. Excuse me. So that is really, I just see transmissions being in the future. 10 years from now, I mean, 10 years ago, well, 20 years ago, everything was going four-stroke. And the two-stroke guys are like, this is a fad, this is stupid. The, the four-strokes can't make the power, they're too heavy, you're gonna, they're gonna, there are a million problems, you're gonna hydro-lock them, it'll never work, it'll never work, it'll never work. 
I remember those guys, all right? They absolutely protested the four strokes. Look where we are today, all right, when it comes to four stroke technology. And all of that, all, all the bells and whistles, all the computerization that's happening with personal watercraft is just evolution of the machine. So here's the big thing though powertrains. CDU at last year's dealer meeting revealed an all, a whole lineup, a whole array of how far away do you think transmissions are in PWCs? Technically, they're already out. If you count the IDF as a transmission, I mean, that's a, that's a forward and reverse gear. All right. A high and low gear, it could be as far away as three years, as close as four, as close as three years, as far away as five. It just depends if it works. If it's a gimmick and it doesn't pan out like intelligent suspension on the sea dews you know, if they're just too much of a pain in the butt and they keep breaking or they're too hard to service. And that was I, the, the IS, the intelligent suspension, just was so labor intensive. Um, to just accessing it and servicing it became cost prohibitive. Thankfully, with the um, IDF, it's all contained in the PTO cover. Will Yamaha come out with a transmission? That'll take 10 years, dude. Because it took Yamaha six years to catch up with Ride. It wasn't that they caught up. They, they had to come up with their own version. And look at Cowie. Cowie's not even there yet. All right? Cowie's not even there yet. So Sea-Doo, Sea-Doo will be the brand who will be like, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing a transmission. They'll be up in, like, you know, the offices and, Quebec doing lines of cocaine going, I have a great idea. Let's put transmissions in these things. Uh, but they do. They come up with these these ideas and it's like, let it all hang out, dude. Go for it. Let's see if it works. You got to give credit where credit's due. And when a company comes up with, I mean, just really jumps off the ledge going, all right, we're doing it. Screw you guys. We're doing it. Dude, credit where credit's due on that one. So anyhow, um, uh, I'm going to come back with a lot. Of, I'm going to come back and answer all these questions. I'm going to finish my little, uh, my little lesson here, and then I'll come back. Um, so the transmission thing, if there's a high and low gear and a reverse, I see that safely five years from now. Safely. Like 25. 25, 26. That's my, that's my thinking. There's 25 around 2025, 2026 is when you're going to see a high and low gear. Um, and it'll automatically shift. I think they won't They won't even let you toggle it. I think they're going to do it by itself. And I think that's going to piss off a bunch of people because they're like, dude, I want to throttle out of it. I want to low gear and pull out of this and then high gear up. Let me let me paddle shift it. And my thinking is that CDU, knowing how CDU works, they're going, no, 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 we'll do the thinking for you. And then like a year or two later, like, okay, we're going to put paddle shifters on it. <laughs> that's... That's how I see it happening. Um, but anyway, so that'll be interesting to see. But I honestly do think that the IDF is the beginning of a whole new future. I really do. I really, really do. Because um, here's the kicker. You could put a very small displacement, small engine with a really good torque curve with a two-speed or three-speed transmission, and you never know. You would it'd be like, oh, my ski makes 110 horse, but it runs like a 170. Well, how is that? Well, it's because it's toggling through the gears and the pitch of the of the prop is right. And, it, and the transmission's keeping it right in this sweet spot where it's like, hey, listen, at 4,000 RPM, this is the best prop we've ever had. And all of a sudden, it, that transmission just keeps it in that range, the whole torque curve. Dude, forget it. It's great. And then all of a sudden it's high gear and you're like, oh, I'm getting nine miles of the gallon. Look at me. All right. I mean, it's the future. It's the future. So there we go. But let's get to our last point, And that is electric watercraft. All right. Um, everyone's people have been messing with electric watercraft for a while. Um, like 10 years ago, uh, Steve Webster at Commander 
was working with Ross Champion to make a uh, electric stand-up. And the engine, the power isn't, the problem isn't power. The power isn't in the engine. The power is battery life, or the problem is battery life. That's the biggest problem, is battery life. And right now, technology is such that we haven't micro-sized really big batteries or really, really, you know, really successful long-range batteries for a personal watercraft. You can shove it in a car. You can fill up the whole... I mean, look at the Teslas. The whole underside of the car is battery banks. You can do that. That's great. But as electric cars, you know, continue to evolve and get, you know, and they they keep continuing to shrink and cut weight out and become more efficient, we're going to see that technology make its way into watercraft. We're just not there yet. All right. sea last year showed at the dealer meeting that they had electric versions of everything. They had electric versions of a Can-Am, electric versions of a ski -Doo. They had electric versions of everything, including a GTI. It was a GTI-E. They had no specs on it. They, they had no specs. They did not tell us how much battery life it had. It did not tell us max speed. It didn't, they did not say a damn thing about it, all right? They just said it works. It runs. And they gave me, like, a picture of it. And I'm like, okay, cool, great, you know. Let me know when it runs. Um, and, but that means they're working on it. That means they're paying attention. Now, before that, it was about three years ago, four years ago, there was a guy out of Central California who was a stand-up writer, and he had a company called Freeform Factory. And he made a stand-up that diesel PWC. Woo! <laughs> can, can you see a... a <laughs> Damn it. John, I, that to me would be the funniest damn thing, especially because I want to see I want to see all those Randy Cabrera rides where there's 300 guys just rolling coal. Just, boom, just black smoke. There would never be another personal watercraft allowed on the water ever again. <laughs> but it'd be the funniest thing you ever saw. All right. Anyhow. Um, yeah, I got, a, I got a Cummins, but I fit an Allison behind it. All right. Uh, anyway, so Freeform Factory, we did a couple stories on that guy. And the dude's smart, smart kid. And one of the best things was that there was a, there's a company out of, um, <laughs> thanks. Um, there's a company out of Salt Lake City, Utah called N Nikola, like Nikola Tesla. And Nikola was making electric quads and side-by-sides. And they started working with the kid at Freeform Factory, and they ended up buying Freeform. And they partnered up together. And what was funny is that they took all of his technology and all of his ideas, and they just mothballed it. And they said, hey, this is great. Can you make a sit-down? And the kid's like, I hate sit-downs. I'd rather quit than sit. You know, he, he was a stand-up kid. And they're like, well, we'll pay you. So he made, he ended up coming up with the Nicola Wave. And it's that blue one with like the, it's got like the Knight Rider red, you know, like single eyebrow headlight that runs around the front of it. Um, and it's still a prototype. We don't, they did like a, a press, you know, a really neat photo shoot. And they, I think they did it at Deer Lake up by uh, Logan, Utah. And because um, I've been on that lake. And anyhow, um, the ski is still not out. It's because bad, and it's not a propulsion problem. It's a battery problem. So at the same time, company a company called Tyga comes out last year, and Tyga comes out with their thing called the the Orca. All right, let me let me open it up. I got my article over here. In fact, I'll share I'll share these articles with you guys right now. All right, Freeform. This is the original article we did on the Freeform. So you guys can have some reading material. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's move on past. Oh, here's CDU's first tease of their electric one, just in case you guys are interested. Um, anyway. Um, anyway. 
yeah, the, the Nicola thing, nothing's come of it. Nothing's come of it. Uh, but anyway, Tiger comes out a, a year and a half ago with their Orca. All right. And the Orca goes like 35, 40 miles an hour. And it's tiny. It's tiny. It looks big until you read the dimensions. And the damn thing is a spark. It's itty bitty. All right. They had to go with the, and it's carbon fiber. It's super lightweight. Um, but did I share the, did I share the Orca story or the Taiga? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the top one I share. So if you guys click on that, it's got all the information on the Taiga Motors ski. That one is the closest to being a functional unit. To the point that I've actually been invited to ride it. They reached out. They said, we'd really love you to ride this thing. I said, sure. And they're like, we're not ready yet. I said, fine. And they're like, can you come up to Nova Scotia? And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, I think it's only going to be in Nova Scotia. And I'm like, no, no. Take, bring it down to Florida. I'm in Tennessee, but I'll go to Florida before I go to Nova Scotia. All right. And it's like, you guys need to bring it down to the number one market in the world. All right. Not to blow smoke up Florida's skirt, but Florida's the number one market in the world. You need to be smart and bring your product to where the people are. Come on. So as far as, and that, that thing's a, it's got a GPS in the screen. It's a full digital screen. It's got all the stuff I'm talking about besides the transmission. So again, I'm not saying Taiga Orca is the future, but Taiga Orca, if you look at it, is kind of where watercraft are going. All right, it, uh, smaller, lighter, possibly electric, or I really see hybrid being a really good, you know, an, a gas electric hybrid being a really good option. I, I don't know why people aren't considering that. I don't know if it's like, well, you know, if we took it like a spark ACE motor and we had a little electric engine off the back of it, it ran, you know, it starts up on the a, on the on the ace motor. Once it gets moving, it goes electric, and you can hear it cut off, or a big thing lights up on the screen, and goes, "You're electric now," or "You're green," and a little leaf pops up, or whatever. I don't know. Um, and what happened to the Baraska? Yeah, what happened to that damn thing? The Baraska wasn't electric, though, was it? We did a story on that piece of crap. Let's look it up. Yeah, Braska. You know what? There's they were making them. They were making them. See, what's funny about those guys is here's the problem. If you want to play in in our yard, being America, you gotta play by our rules. And there's a couple things you gotta do. Yeah, they're Italian, but they're but they're it's an Italian company, but they're built in Austria, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, they're Austrian, Austrian manufacturing company. Um, and yeah, here's a story on it. We we you know what we toured the plant, Kevin. Um, we actually went to the plant. Yeah, guys, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a link. Here's the link to us touring the plant. But here is the link to all the articles that we've done on Baraska and Belasi and all the parent companies. If you guys want to go down the rabbit hole on the Watercraft Journal, I did a funny story years ago. I did a story in 2017 about Belasi. And I put up like this Playboy Playmate from like 1967 some super, you know, hot madman era type of girl. And it was this love letter about how I, I kept, I was in love with this girl, but she just kept pushing me off. And, and it was so funny because it was a super joke. It was just meant to be silly. Um, just because she was, everyone wanted her attention, but she, she was a super flake and no one could ever tie her down. And I did this whole story on this whole thing. And I'm telling you, I got a letter from them. 
Belasi sent me a letter, and they're like, this made us laugh our heads off. This was the funniest damn thing we've ever read. And so it's the last story. It's got like 4,500 views. Um, but, yeah, check it out on that last link I sent. So, anyways, okay. So, yeah, the Belasi baraska thing. Um, I know that Griorgi Kaza used to race for them. Uh or he was he was their guinea pig. He did a lot of their testing and tuning, um, and he rode their three hundred and thirty horsepower ones. He raced them a couple of times, and he he messaged me one time. He goes, "This thing's legit. It's legit." Um, what's funny though is <laughs> I'm going to say this, and this isn't fair, but if you look at the hull and you look at the dimensions, it's an STXR. It's a Cowie STXR. Look at the hull. Look at the hull shape. Look at the chines. Look at the radial chines and look at the lifting streaks. It's an STXR. Those guys, I'm not going to call them plagiarists, but <laughs> I love how people borrow from each other. That just, it laugh. I have to laugh at that. All right, guys, that was enough for my little predictions of what I got. Let's answer some questions. Uh, let's see if I can cut this down, but we got a lot of communication, so I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, uh, all right, let's see here. Three minutes and counting. All right. Free pop. Nope. Let's see. Any hints on 22 Yamaha FX? Yeah, sound system. Possibly screen. Uh, new Spark of Polytech. No. Uh, Spark will probably stay as Polytech. Maybe if they redesign it in 2023, it might have the thicker... Polytech with the stringers. I don't see a reason for it. Um, the stringers and the thicker material was primarily to withstand the pressures of the 230 on the GTR 230. That's why Polytech 2 really exists, is so that the motor mounts wouldn't rip right out of, you know, wouldn't rip out of the ski when it when it really, you know, romped on the throttle. So that's there's a reason why they did Polytech 2.0. It's not just like extra, you know, extra seasoning. It's, it, it really is a thicker cast with fiberglass stringers to withstand the bigger motors. All right. Uh, I seen a video on the 2021 FX limited and colors look amazing. Good. Good. Yeah. Check them out. Check them out. Um, let's see here. Nobody's giving details. I bought a 2021 Fish Pro for my Florida home and had to order it and haven't seen one. They're selling them at MSRP because of the virus. They're selling them at MSRP because everybody wants a personal watercraft. In fact, they're probably going to sell them at above MSRP because everyone wants a personal watercraft. All right? Demand. We have to go back to high school civics in high school economics and talk about supply and demand. There's more demand than there is supply. When there is more demand than supply, the price goes up. When there's more supply than there is demand, price goes down. Okay. Um, we need a ride system on a Cali. We all do. We all want it. And check out the last live feed that I did about Kawasaki and how Kawasaki could regain some market share. I go into detail about the reverse. That's in a th it's a thumb trigger reverse, so it doesn't get confused with Yamaha or Sea-Doo on the left hand. All right, um, Jimmy Trump will win. I agree, but let's keep politics out of this one. Some people want to come here just to avoid politics. Uh, do you think the VX sound system is better than the uh, than the current? Okay, I answered that one. Uh, I love this channel, John. Thank you. Uh, please share with your friends. We want to get it to grow. Uh, kind of okay. Uh, no changes in NXL two paint finish. We talked about that, so that's good. Um, I would not buy a Sea-Doo. Mechanical issues unreliable. Uh, plus, a lot of the 2020s, 2001s ones are sinking. No, they're not. No, they are not. 2021s are not sinking, and the 2020s are not. 19s. Um, 18s and 19s had some problems. Uh, I've heard there was a few things. Um, 
but carbon seal failures for 2020 are actually record low. At least, for, for, at least from what I was told. I'm the media, uh, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, but yes, they were having failures 2018, 19. 20s apparently are doing rather well. So take that for what you will. All right. I ordered the sound system on my 21 GP blue. I think the speakers are white. Yes, the, the speaker casings are going to be white on the blue GP. They're going to be black on the black and green GP. They have two color options. Uh, Japan executives are a bunch of 80-year-olds. Um, there's some young guys who are, who are pretty dynamic at Yamaha. I can't say the same for Cowie. Um, new Spark X. Uh, or probably, th- yeah, here's Mark asking again. Okay. Just curious, is the market already answered that one? Next Gen Carbon Seal, I answered that one. Waiting for the first ski with an airbag. <laughs> Can you imagine that going off? It'd blow you right off the ski. I mean, if an airbag would give you a, a black eye or break your nose in a car, imagine one going off on a watercraft. Woo! Um, now, if the airbag was underneath your butt and just shot you off the ski, that might be something. But then where do you land? <laughs> um, does anyone know of another dealer of cycle springs? Uh, no, I do not know. Um, self-clearing prop cycle. Uh, well, the, that's that's the... The idea is if, now IDF is not designed to help get a rock or a piece of wood or a plastic bag out of the prop. What it's meant to do is if the intake grate is full of like seaweed or grass or something like that, it's meant to just push it out. Um, Because reversing a prop with a rock in it uh, might just dig that rock in into the the wear ring even worse. So, and in reversing the prop with a rock or a big piece of wood in there, it, it's going to hit the leading, it's going to actually bend the leading edge of the blade worse. So again, yeah, I talked about this, uh, uh, I talked about this with, a, with another guy and we were talking about like, what are the potentials for it? And if you got a rock or a piece of wood, something hard in inside your prop, you're kind of boned um, because IDF won't, I don't think it would be very successful in getting that obtrusion out of the prop. So we got to be mindful of that. Um, let's see here. What does Yamaha have instead of carbon seal? Answer that. Why do you say sorry so much? Um, I could say sorry. Sorry. Uh, is the GP 1800 SVHO still the fastest ski in 2021? Um, technically, it's not the fastest. On paper. Stock to stock, it's technically not the fastest. Um, so far, numbers-wise, out of the box, box stock, the fastest accelerating personal watercraft, st- still to my knowledge, is the RX TX 300. And it's by like fractions of a second, but it's still technically the quickest. Um, is the G- Yamaha GP 1800 R SVHO the winningest personal watercraft? Yes. Just look at the world finals, literally just finished today. Um, it was like record low on it, you know, attendance, but they're blaming that on COVID. Um, and the travel restrictions, but it was predominantly GPs, like the GPs murdered. All right. If no carbon seal, I would have a sea do until then I'll have Yamaha. You change skis every two years, Jimmy. Holy cow. Must be nice. Mr. Money bags. All right. Is the 7,000 price, 7,000 dollar price difference between a GTI and the GTX really worth it? Well, they're different machines. That's like asking, they're like, well, is a the price difference between a Camaro and a Corvette worth it? Well, they're different machines. You know, is the difference between a Charger and a Challenger? Well, they're different machines. You know, 
There's a difference between a Mustang and a dumpster. No, no, they're both trash. Ah, Ford. Okay. Um, all right, let's keep moving. Oh, the hey, Thumper, thank you for the correction. It's 150 horse from the factory. Aftermarket guys dining them out at 164 horsepower. Mine will be there next month. Let it snow. That's bitching. Thank you for letting me know that. Thank you. I appreciate you putting that up there. All, um, all right. All of the old 2T130s were 63 miles per hour. Oh, okay. 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 Sorry. I, um, yeah. Up here in Canada, Yamaha is more expensive than Sea Dew. Um, well, a, that's because Canada is a, or, or, or c is a Canadian company. And although manufacturing is still in Mexico, it's a Canadian company. And that means that there is loyalty programs, all right? For hiring so many people, the government subsidizes. It makes it, makes it cheaper. Same thing happens with, like, Dodge and Chevy trucks. They're cheaper. Ford trucks are still manufactured in Mexico. So you can get like a 1500 four door Ram for like $6,000 cheaper than a two door 1500. Um, it just depends. So again, that's business. That's international business. I don't have to tell you. All right. Um, what would you buy if you wanted to race next? Okay. Answer that. Probably look into some polarized sunglasses in the future. Um, hey, Mark, if you're looking at polarized sunglasses that are the best polarized sunglasses on for personal watercraft riding, look at the Wind Rider sunglasses. I did an article on them on Watercraft Journal. Wind Rider, like Night Rider, but Wind Rider. Uh, they don't even advertise with me anymore. They stopped advertising like two years ago. I still wear them. They're the best. Um, uh, nineteen thousand five hundred dollars for an RXTX here in Ontario. That's so much money. Oh, all right. Uh, offshore GP stand-up. I already answered that. Uh, any class? I answered that. Want to know what ski will you will drag race? I'm not drag racing. Those guys are insane. Oh, JP Racing. I've been watching his YouTube channel. <clears throat> no, thank you. Um, those dudes. I'll go down to Riva and I'll go ride like a, you know, like a IGSBA stock class ski that goes 86. That's plenty good for me. I'm good. Because I go around corners. I like the buoy race. I like to push myself rather than ah! have my face peeled off while, while doing it. Those guys go out there and the crappiest life vests with no shirt, no shoes, no gloves, no safety equipment, no neck brace, no helmet. Go 95 miles an hour. Pass. Pass. All right. Are you trying to give me um, liberals finder as part of the GPS and torpedoes embedded in the hull? Um, yeah. More politics out of Jimmy. Uh, if you had to choose the ST3 hull... For racing, what would it be? None. That's what I would pick. No ST3s. I would, I would ride an RXPX, um, but I would not ride. I would not race any of the ST3s for racing. Not one. Uh, let's see here. How far away do you think trans? Okay, answered that one. What's your preference for 2021 GP? Or C2 RXTX. They're different skis. I mean, they're 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 not even in the same class. So the GP would be comparable to the RXPX. The RXTX would be comparable to the FX. If it's a question, I, I pick Yamaha on both of them. Sorry. The hulls. The hull designs are so superior. It's all it comes down to hull. Power is easy. Power is so easy. You have to just call Jerry Gaddis and be like, hey, I want 350 horse. Okay. He'd send you everything you need. It's the hull, stupid. You know, they say, like, it's the economy, stupid. You know, it's like, you know, what are people voting for? They vote with their wallet. 
they remember how much money they made pre-COVID and they go, I want more of that. And that's what they're going to vote for. Regardless of whoever the president is, they are like, whatever that was, I want that. And then, you know, so it's the economy, stupid. When it comes down to personal watercraft, it's all for the, it's all hull design for me. All right. Um, I want the GTX Limited 300 with the ski pylon. I need a three-seater, but damn the price. What do you recommend? For a cheaper price, get used. Ski pylons, or you can buy ski pylon accessories. That's fine. GTX 300, fine. But again, the three things, now I have to say four because I forgot something super important. If I was to buy any 300 horsepower ST3, whether it's an RXTX or a GT or a GTX Limited or the new GTX 300 non-limited, there's four things I would get. Number one, Pro Series sponsors. Number two, Pro Series intake grade. Number three, SCOM unit. Number four is the uh, oil separator. It is the uh, catch cam. Too many guys reach out to me and they're like, dude, you're forgetting the catch can. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. You got to have the catch can on that thing. So oil separated because those engines have a massive amount of blow by. And if you guys want to talk about engine blow by, I can wear you out for three hours. All right. And because now we're talking about stuff I really like, which is engine tech. And um, yeah, so we can do that. Okay. Okay. Um, in your opinion, what is better? Kawasaki or Sea-Doo for... For the middle machines, you mean like uh, like recreation segment GTI, GTI SE 170, GTI SE 170 tomorrow over over the Cali, <sighs> done. I love that. I have a GTI SE in my garage right now. I just fully detailed it, like fully detailed it. it looks like a showroom stock. Um, yeah. I love the GTI SE 170. Um, okay, moving on. FXHO setup for fishing or Sea Dew Fish Pro for open ocean fishing. Both are good. There's been some people saying, like, why doesn't Yamaha make a Fish Pro? They don't have to. Um, they've radically opened up their accessory group, and their accessory group pretty much has everything to make any FX or VX into a Fish Pro Yamaha. They got the same size GPS, big monster, monster seven and a half or 7.8 screen, 7.8 inch screen, Garmin Fish Finder with a transducer in the hull, big tank on the back, big ice chest on the back, rod holders all over the damn place. You can kit your FX. Um, I talked to someone, uh, actually I, I talked to Cycle Springs about it. And they said, we can outfit an FXHO non-cruiser with all the Yamaha accessories for fishing and get you, I think, like 150 bucks cheaper than a Fish Pro. So it all just comes down to, well, do you want a carbon seal or no carbon seal? It's up to you. Okay. Um, all right. How... Would the high and low gear work without having a variable pitch in the impeller? Spinning faster would cause any crazy gap tension. They're not spinning faster. The goal is to keep the prop operating at a window, an RPM window. So let's say the RPM window of this magical mystery pitch prop is 5,000 RPM. Let's say that's the magic happy place, okay? Because a factory prop right now with a, with a one-to-one -one gear ratio has to be able to be happy at 4,000 RPM and 8,000 RPM. It has to be efficient at, both, at, at all, the whole range of the engine. So if you look at a pitch, and suddenly the pitch is really happy at 5,000 RPM, what the gearing does for the transmission is that the gearing is like, okay, first gear, second gear, third gear. And it keeps it within this 3,000 to 5,000 or whatever it might be. I'm, I'm pulling numbers out of my butt. So just work with me on this one. But 
it keeps that pitch in this pocket. And the reason it had a reason it wants to keep that RPM in this pocket is because that's the optimal pitch for the prop. All right. And the idea is to gear split. The idea is to reduce RPMs. So the engine isn't working so hard. So let's say that the engine, regardless of RPM, of engine RPM, it's maintaining prop RPM. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a difference here. There's a big difference. It's just like your transmission in your car, okay? My charger, my 700 horsepower, stupid freaking 69 Dodge charger had, until I murdered it, had a four-speed overdrive transmission, all right? Third gear was one-to-one. -one. So when I was spinning 3,000 RPM, the, the rear gear was spinning, spinning 3,000 RPM. All right, it's one to one. But then overdrive kicks in. And it's a 0.74 gear ratio, which means for every one revolution, that's spinning three quarters. All right. So suddenly I'm going 75 miles an hour with the overdrive on in this big block Mopar. But yet, I'm only spinning 3,600 RPM going 75 miles an hour. And I'm getting 10 and a half to 1 miles per gallon, which for 700 horsepower, naturally aspirated, it's pretty damn good. Um, you know, with 11 and a quarter to 1 compression. <laughs> the car is really obnoxious. It's, it's, a, it's a, just a monster. Anyway. So, and then now I'm building a 10 and a half to one compression motor. That's going to make about 585. It's to be a, not for the charger. It's going to go in another car. It's going to go on a seven one challenger. But again, it's all about gearing and, and gear splitting. And that's what the job of the transmission, the job of the transmission is to drop engine RPM without losing revolutions at the rear wheel. So think of that when it comes to a prop pitch versus engine RPM. Okay, I think I've mangled that question. All right, Cowie's missing the boat when it comes to a ride IBR. I agree. Wireless steering. Oh, I can't imagine they would do it, especially because there's... Now, not wireless steering, but I have seen... I have seen ideas for assisted steering, power-assisted steering. It, there isn't a need for it. And plus, it gives you a very unnatural feel. I'm, all, I'm This is going to be the longest one. I'm already over an hour and a half. Guys, this is ridiculous. All right. Um, holy cow. Look at all these other questions. Dang it. Um, favorite two-stroke ski of all time? STXR. Cowie triple. Oh. Triple... Pro, triple Protec carbs with a Protec pipe, Protec nozzle, scat track pump, beach house, uh, beach house serrated, dropped low sponsons, and an R&D intake grate. That is the most badass setup I've ever seen on an STXR. If I was to build a two-stroke, that'd be it. All right. Uh, better storage for a spark potentially, but that'd be a redesign. Um, let's see here. Will the Superjet continue to be made in Japan? Yes. Yes. Um, would you ride with or without jet ski cover? Does it? What? Would I put a jet ski cover on while I rode it? No. Can't imagine doing it. Uh, GP 1800R versus Ultra 310R in terms of pure speed, meaning top speed on glass, I'd ride the 1800. Um, but you're going to hit your rev limiter fast. Well, no, that's not true. Cowie's pretty limited to out of the factory. I'd say, I'd say Yamaha, it's lighter. Um, 
with this level of demand, do you think Polaris and Articat? Um, Polaris, yes. Honda, yes. But it's going to take a while to get there, for, especially for Honda. Honda's going to come in so far behind the curve. Honda's going to show up when there's three people left in the party and go, hey, everyone, what happened? Polaris could jump tomorrow. Um, in fact, I keep getting teased about Polaris, so I'll keep you posted. Um, 22,000, 22 and a half for a GP with no audio? Dude, drive to the U.S. and get one. Cross the border, for God's sakes. Ah! What's your opinion on a wave boat? I'm going to go drive one. When I drive one, when I go ride one, I'll let you know. I'm excited. They and they're and they sponsor the magazine, and I have yet to ride one. I have to go down there. I'm excited. I think they're cool, and I and and it's an it's an idea that's been around for a long time, but I think they actually executed it well. All right, get a GTX 230 or a 170. Uh, I'd go GTI or a GTX. Um, do, 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 do. What's engine blow by? <sighs> That's for uh, another story. You know what? Hey, Adrian, let me do this for you. I'm going to open up the Watercraft Journal. I'm going to give you an article. We're going to do it for you right now. I want you to read this. If you have questions, you can email me privately. Um, do, do, do. What is engine blow by? It is the byproduct of in uh, of crankcase atmosphere. Too much crankcase atmosphere. All right. Um, it should. Uh, let's see here. Rotex engines are in most Cessna. Planes. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're not the same engine. For goodness' sakes, it's not a Sea-Doo engine in there. It's a totally different motor. Um, Mark, FX SVHO or GP1800. Um, slim frame, Teenage Sun, FX. Plus, if you're ever, I tell anyone who's ever on the fence about an FX or GP, I tell them FX. Uh, people who want a GP will only want a GP. People who are on the fence, get an FX. How many hours are on your GT170? Um, I think like 30, maybe just under 30, like 28. I have not had any problems with that ski whatsoever, except for the fact that the big plastic corners and uh, on the bond rail and the nose are super duper soft. And if you bump into anything, it's going to scar it. Um, but that's the only thing. Um, RXP, uh, 2020, RXPX 300 versus GP. Kyle, I've done that video. Go watch that video. I got it. And I go into full detail. I'm not going to do it here because I'm already running over. Uh, when should we expect the video on a wave boat? Probably January. Because I go to Florida to, to ride one in the second week of November. All right. Love the content. Has the new Rotex 170 been a real life? It's been a great engine. Dude, torque curve is great. Um, it doesn't have the vibration that the 155 had. Um, I, I really, really, really do like the one, the GTI 170. I really do, guys. Um, I can't say it's going to be Watercraft of the Year yet because we haven't done our voting, but it's in the top three. It's in the top three. All right, I'm done. Uh, if the prop stayed at one RPM, surely the ski would stay the same speed. Um, again, that goes into prop speed and and operating it. it there's there's some pitch science in there that was explained to me that I can't reiterate. So. Um, all I know is that there's there's optimal prop speeds that because we're at one to one, 
you're not getting that. So that's the problem. If you can get if you can get that prop speed, or you can get that prop to spin ten thousand RPM, and the engine's at four thousand. I mean, again, it's the science of getting that that progressive scale to move. All right. Do you think CDU will do a four cylinder motor? No. Go look at Rotax and go look at their um, their look at Rotax Austria and go look up their patents. They do not own a patent for a four cylinder engine. They own a patent for a five cylinder engine and they own a patent for a V6, but they do not have it. All right. You're drinking a fake drink. No bourbon. It, it's not, it's, dude, it's literally lemon buy. It's a buy. It's a coconut or coconut pineapple buy. I, I keep saying lemon. It's a coconut pineapple buy. Um, all right. I'm done. Guys, thanks again. Um, Please support the magazine by sharing these videos, uh, especially our review videos. Those are the ones that I actually pay money for, for editing and, you know, buying a license for sound and music and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so share the videos, help us, our subscriptions to grow. And if you really feel like sub, uh, supporting the magazine, please buy a t-shirt or a hoodie. The link is at the top of here. I'm going to sign out. It's been an hour and 40 minutes. This is the longest damn one I've done of these. And it's just way too long. So thanks again, guys. Thank you for tuning in. And let me know if you prefer 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for these. All right. Have a good one. We'll see you next week.